In today's video, we're gonna show you how to get lots of super relevant traffic to your e-commerce store for free. Now, who wouldn't want that, right? Now, all you have to do is give Google what it wants, and that's pretty much what SEO is all about. One of the key components of SEO is good keyword research. Now, there's a lot of videos, tutorials, and guides out there on keyword research, but not many specifically relating to keyword research for e-commerce. That's what we're gonna to cover today. Now, a few days ago, you would have seen a video from my colleague David on the best three Shopify apps. Now, if you haven't seen that yet, I recommend checking it out after this video, of course. I will leave a link to that in the description below. Now, my name is Andrew, and together with David, we've decided to start this channel to pretty much teach you everything we know about e-commerce and how to grow and start e-commerce companies. Now, we'll be covering tips, tactics, and techniques and our own personal case studies, so you can go and apply this to your own stores, so you can hear more of this. Sweet, sweet music to my ears. Okay, without any more hesitation, let's go. So what we're gonna cover today, traffic versus buyer traffic. There's a big difference between those two things and we're gonna cover that because it's really important. We're also gonna talk about why great keyword researchers steal or we're gonna talk about the steal framework. So we've, we've talked about, there's an old saying about uh, good artists borrow and great artists steal. So it's kind of come from that a little bit but it's actually turned into a framework that's gonna help you step by step find the right keywords to add to your product pages. And then the next thing we're gonna do is actually make sure that these keywords that you found have commercial intent. So it means that not only are they gonna drive traffic to your website, but they've also got to convert. Now, not every person that's gonna to come to your website is gonna convert, but we wanna make sure that these keywords we're optimizing for have a higher potential for someone to convert when they've come through from Google from typing this in. So we wanna make sure that we show you how to do this as well. In the last step, we're gonna cover a bonus tool. And it's really cool because this tool will help you find the right keywords really quickly and help you write this into a description. Now, this is really good for your key products. You might have three or four products on your store that you really wanna make sure that you're driving traffic to. So this tool will definitely help you do that and very, very quickly. So we're gonna cover that a little bit later on. So let's get into it. Now, information keywords are great for driving lots of traffic, but what's the point of generating all that traffic if no one buys from your store? So we're not saying that this is bad per se, but next week when we talk a little bit more about content marketing and uh, category pages, we'll kind of tie this in a little bit more and show you why these are still important. But what you really wanna be focusing on is your buyer keywords or purchase intent keywords. Now, these are usually more product focused, and they're designed to capture potential customers in the buying stage of the customer journey. So to demonstrate the difference between information and purchase intent keywords, you can see here what I've got is best Nike football boots. So what this keyword is doing is, or what this person is doing with this keyword is trying to discover which are the best Nike football boots. So they've got their heart set on Nike, but they're just not sure about which football boots they actually want from Nike because they want to know the best ones. In this one, we've got the purchase or product optimized keyword. So you can see here, they've typed in Nike Mercurial Vapor Size 12, which means they know what exact shoe they're after and their size. So this keyword tells me that they're a little bit more down the bottom of the funnel, they're ready to make a purchase. And these are the keywords that you wanna find for your product pages. And we're gonna talk about how to do that a little bit more right now. So remember before at the beginning of the video, I said great keyword research is steal. So we're gonna talk about the steal framework for finding these keywords and walking you through step by step so we can come up with the best user intent based keywords. So at the top, we've got search, then we're gonna take, then we're gonna evaluate, add, and then of course at the bottom, leverage these. So the first place we're gonna to go to is the biggest retailer or online retailer on the planet, which is Amazon. And the really cool thing about this is we can go into their search bar and type in our product, which could be a dog bowl. And what it will do is spit out all the different product keywords that it has in its database on dog bowl. So we've got like here, dog bowl slow, slow feeder, we've got dog bowl ceramic, dog bowl mat, dog bowl stand, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so you could take all of these and put them into your spreadsheet to start with. And you can just like kind of go through, do a good sort and come up with as many as you can and put them into the spreadsheet. Don't, don't think too much now, which ones are right, which ones are wrong. Just kind of get them in there. 
Next off, we have a really cool tool, which is called the Keyword Tool Dominator. Now this kind of plugs into Amazon and will actually find the best keywords on Amazon related to your keyword. So we've got dog ball here in the keyword contains, and this is what we're searching for. And a quick search of this will help you find the different types of keywords relating to your specific keyword. Now, again, we don't want to think too much about this. We just want to kind of get the best ones that we think make sense and put them into a spreadsheet. Next up, we have SEM Rush, which is a competitive research tool. There's also Ahrefs if you feel comfortable or more comfortable using that. Um, so what you want to do here is you could type in the name of a competitor. So for this example, because we're talking about dog bowls, we would put in Pet Circle, which is a big uh, pet online retailer here in Australia. And what I want to do is then filter out the keywords to find what they're using and what they're ranking for. So let's have a look at that. What it does is we'll scrape information from your competitors so you can see what keywords they're using for, how much volume they're getting. Um, and then you can determine whether you want to add these keywords to your product page as well. So the best way to do this using the example we had before for the dog bowl is to start with that. So what we want to do is type in one of our competitors, which would be Pet Circle in Australia, which is a massive uh, pet store online. And what it's going to do is just go through and pretty much scrape the site. And what we'll have is a whole bunch of keywords, which we can go in here into the tool and find our keywords. Now we want to go into Australia once it stops loading because we want to make sure we're in the right country. So we want to make sure we're getting accurate information and then we want to filter. So I don't use this one. I kind of go into this filter, include keyword containing, and then just type in like we were doing before dog bowl, and it should give us a list. So now that we have the list, we want to make sure there's enough volume for each keyword. So we can see here that these have a lot of volume around them, but they're not really what I would call product keywords. So you can see here, this is a lot better slow feeder dog bowl. And we, the other thing we want to do is check apart from how much volume they're getting, we want to see what pages these are actually getting directed to because you can see here that some of these are actually for category pages. So you can see here that the dog feeding bowl is probably more of a category page. Um, and then if you look at this, that's a category page as well. And then we've got a product page. So we know that this is, this keyword is directing to a product page. And you can see the volume here is, although it's low is kind of low. It's still enough though, to drive traffic to the website. And if people are looking for this, it's more of a buyer intent keyword. So we probably want to add this in here. So we want to check not only what volume these keywords are getting, but what pages they're getting directed to from the competitors, because this gives us a clue in terms of where they're using them. And that'll help us to decide where we should use them on our page or on our site as well. The next thing is you want to take those keywords and then put them into a CSV, Excel spreadsheet, or Google Doc. It doesn't really matter, what, whatever you're comfortable with, but we want to just get them into a sheet so we can start to sort them a little bit later on. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is evaluate. Now we need to evaluate which keywords we want to use and where we want to use them. This is probably the most crucial and critical step in the whole process. To do this effectively, we want to use the PKF method or product keyword fit method to evaluate if the keyword has enough search volume and if it's suitable for the intended page that we want to put it on. So what is the product keyword fit method? You want to find keywords that fit your product and the page you're driving traffic to. If you're selling belts that aren't made of leather, maybe they're PVC or some other rubbish, I don't know, you don't want to use the keyword buy leather belt. If your product is made of wood, you don't want to have keywords that contain the word metal. You don't want to stretch. In other words, you don't want to make a stretch where you're just trying to drive traffic to the website because the keywords you found with the highest search volume are all based around, I don't know, a different product that you're just trying to use to leverage people to the page, which is not going to work. So if you've got a wooden product and you're using a metal keyword, all people are going to do is they're going to land on your page and they're going to bounce right back off. So it's not really going to help you much. So you want to make sure that the keywords that you're using are relevant to your product. The other thing too is you want to make sure that the keyword you have selected is either a product page keyword or a category page keyword, or it could even be a blog page keyword. Now, for the sake of this video, we're going to focus on product keywords, but next week we're going to talk a little bit more about the category and blog keywords for driving more information discovery keywords. But for today, we want to stick to just using product keywords. So how do we evaluate this? The next thing we want to do is grab the keywords that we found for our product category 
and put them into its own tab in a spreadsheet that we have. And if we have a blog or, um, or category pages, keywords that we found in there, we wanna separate those out as well. We then wanna leverage these. So this is the final step in the steel framework where once you have the keywords, then it's time to start working out which pages you want to, or which product pages, I should say, you want to add these keywords to. And like I said, next week, we're going to talk a little bit more about the actual writing and the copy. But right now, we just want to figure out which keyword goes where for which product. And this is where we can start to leverage the keywords we've found throughout this process. Now, for a final step and a kind of fail safe, what we could do is check for commercial intent. So we want to take those product keywords that we found and just run them through one of my favorite tools, which is Google Keyword Planner to see and check if these potentially have a really high possibility for commercial intent. Now, Google Keyword Planner, I find isn't so great for generating new keywords, but it is great for these sort of purposes of checking. So what we want to see is if there's high competition, and we also wanna see what the average cost per click is or how much someone's willing to bid for this product because if these are both higher or on the higher end, we know that this keyword is pretty high intent. So this would be a good keyword to rank for if you want to drive people to a purchase page and get someone to actually make a sale. Now, as promised, here's a bonus tool we've got for you. It's called Surfer SEO. And what it does is it will quickly help you speed up the product keyword research process and also help you write really great content for your product descriptions. Now, what it does, it'll scrape Google, the first page of Google to find other competitors that are ranking for your keyword. And it'll tell you how long it has to be, what should be in the heading, what's the primary search term, how many terms, uh, so how many times is the, the term should show up in the piece of content. And it pretty much gives you a whole guide here. So you can pretty much follow this template and it tells you here, for instance, that the word super is used 19 times, king and then king bed, all this sort of stuff is used in the description. So it speeds up the process quite quickly. So you can then use this to write really great product descriptions. I'll leave a link to this in the description below. So that's pretty much it for today's video. Now, if you followed the steel framework, if you've checked that you've got product keyword fit and that your keywords are going through to the right pages, if you've also checked buyer intent using Google Keyword Planner, you're pretty much ready to start writing your product description pages. Now, we're gonna talk more about that next week. We're also gonna talk about how to use those keywords we found for discovery and maybe for the blog as well, and then start writing content that will actually gain authority and then how to push that authority back to your product pages. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to destroy the like button. And we will have David back next week as well to uh, give you another brand new video. But until then, my name is Andrew. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on Nerds of E-Commerce next week. Catch you later.